In this tutorial we will cover the advanced tools of Inkscape, or as I like to call them, the tricks. The first half will be the essential stuff, and the second half will be the non-essential, good to know stuff. The first thing we'll cover is selection. Now in the last video I showed you how to select an item. You press the arrow key and click on the item. Let's do that now. Arrow select, click on the yellow line. Now, the yellow line didn't select and there's a reason for that. If you look carefully, you can see what might be happening. When I clicked on the yellow line, a whole thing selected, like it was a group or something. Well, that's exactly what happened. I grouped them previously. Okay, so let's ungroup them. We go edit, select all, object, ungroup. Now we'll try to select again. Arrow select, yellow line. Again, it didn't select. And if we look at the XML editor, you can see what's happening here. Here are our three shapes, and it's inside this group here. And if you look at that group, it's inside this group here. So it's a group inside a group inside a group. And the only way you can select something with the arrow key is to ungroup everything down to the base so that they're all three components, and then select it. So we'll do that now. Edit. Select all, object, ungroup. Look down here, three objects, group of three objects in layer one. We'll do it again. Edit, select all, object, ungroup. Three objects still, we still have to ungroup it again. Object, ungroup. No groups to ungroup. Now everything is free. We'll try again with arrow select. Now we can select the component. Let's now group them again as another example. Edit, select all, object, group. Notice it's inside a group. Object, group. It's inside another group. And object, group. Inside a third group. Now, if we come to here is node select, we can click, click on that and we can select our objects now. Now we'll try the circle. Node select, circle, rectangle, line. Basically you cannot arrow select when it's in a group, but you can node select it if it's in a group. Let's now go to our XML editor we again can select shapes inside a group. And when it is selected, with the arrow key pressed, we can use these coordinates. And they will actually move. This again is another way to manipulate nodes and shapes without taking them out of a group. Let's look at another example. Here we have this drawing of an ECU connector. Now I want to cut this out and paste it into another drawing. So I have the arrow select, and I'll put a box around it, but it won't select. That's because it's inside a group. Now, we go to node select. Here we can click on a node. Anything on the red line will be selected. We hold the shift key down, and we can click another one. If we click it again, it'll unselect it. And slowly you can accumulate all these nodes into the shape you want without having to ungroup everything. This particular drawing to ungroup was inside about five groups and took over an hour because there's 20,000 nodes in it. We'll just close this down and go on to XML Editor. Basically you can think of a vector drawing it's just lines of code that get assembled when you open it. And that's what the XML editor is. But it's a kind of a graphical, non-direct coding. You can do what we're going to do next with a text editor on the actual SVG. But here it's much more convenient and simple. A 
at the top of the edit editor we have the buttons. New element node, new text node, duplicate node, delete node, unindent, indent and the up and down raise node or lower node keys. Let's run through a couple of examples of what it can do. Let's pick this path. Duplicate. Now we'll move it. We'll go X20. We can delete it. We can pick this circle. We can unindent it. And unindent it out of these out of its group. We can raise it. We can lower it. We can actually put a have a string of nodes here and regroup everything afterwards just by selecting them and moving them around with these keys. Let's now make a new element node. Click the base group and click the new element node. SVG colon G create. We now have this one. Select a path. We will raise it to just under the base of our first group and then we'll select rectangle duplicate unindent 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 raise and there's the group that we've created now we'll indent it it's now in this group I'll just move this node to show you that there's two of them If you notice, our rectangle is behind this other rectangle. So we have to select the group of the top one, unindent it to level with the other group, then raise it, and now this one is below this one. Basically with the XML editor and the top toolbar, all you have to do is create an object and you can manipulate it totally with these two. Now let's ungroup everything. We go edit, select all, object, ungroup. Edit, select all, object, ungroup. Object, ungroup. Object, ungroup. No groups to ungroup in selection. So we're at the base. These objects are in the layer 1 group. So we will node select and select the yellow one. Now we'll go back to arrow select and here we can raise or lower that thing. Let's raise it to the top and now it's on top of the other one. This node select and then arrow select after is a way to manipulate stuff that is stuck in groups. While we're on the toolbar we'll go to the next thing ruler. Click on ruler Make sure the units are what you understand. Click on a line and drag it to the bottom line. And you'll see it's 29 millimeters. If you look at the line, it's in the middle of the stroke on both sides. But we'll look at the rectangle. At the rectangle with arrow select, it says 30 millimeters high. So that accounts for the 29 millimeters. You can use the ruler for a lot of different things like clearances and double checking dimensions accurately, especially in PCB view. Let's now look at grids in more detail. We'll go to File, Document Properties, Grids. We'll create a grid. We'll go spacing 10 by 10. And now we will select the circle with the arrow key selected, pick it up and bring it to a junction point of a grid. Notice how it doesn't snap to the center. Down here are all the snap options. The main one I use is this one, snap centers of objects. Click it down, grab the object again, bang, snaps to the center. Pick it up again, snaps to the next center. Here, here in snap, we can actually set different 
snapping distances and what it'll snap to. I generally I do adjust some, but they're generally at standard snap points. Another important thing to know is the origin point. This is the zero zero origin point of our page, and every object on it is related to the zero zero point. That's what this x and y coordinate is. But if you look at this object, its distances are based on its bottom left corner as well. So it's the distance from here to here. Let's click on the rectangle. It says x 10 mil, y 10 mil. And as you see our, on our grid, 10 mil and 10 mil. So it's this point to this 0, 0 point. Looking at circles, it's similar, but there's an imaginary box around it. It's from this point to this point that its coordinates are there. That pretty much covers all the advanced essentials.